Liz Cheney drawing a line in the sand. The Wyoming congresswoman who just lost her primary bid for re-election was asked a very specific pointed question yesterday at the Texas Tribune Festival. Take a, take a listen. Will you remain a Republican regardless of what happens in the next election? Uh, I'm going to make sure Donald Trump, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure he's not the nominee. And if he is the nominee, I won't be a Republican. She will not be a Republican. Cheney also said that she will campaign for Democrats to ensure that Republican candidates who promoted election lies do not get elected. Joining me now to discuss this are CNN political commentators, Republican strategist Alice Stewart and Democratic strategist Maria Cardona. Thank you both for being with me mm -hmm. uh, this evening. Um, Alice, to you first, uh, we just heard there that, 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 that pretty forceful statement from Liz Cheney. Um, if she leaves the Republican Party, where do you think she ends up? And do you think Republicans care? Look, uh, privately, there are a lot of Republicans that s support what she's doing in terms of standing up for defending freedom, uh, peaceful transfer of power, and upholding the rule of law. But publicly, many of them are saying, don't let the door hit you on the way out. They, they say that she has caused too much attention to uh, her frustration with Donald Trump and what he's done with January 6th, and they are happy to see her leave. I talk with her camp, and they tell me that uh, she doesn't really want to leave the Republican Party, but if, if, there's, if he's the nominee, she has no choice. She would view Donald Trump as the nominee of the Republican Party in 2024, as the party is more of a cult of personalities as opposed to a party of principles. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do moving forward is get back to the principles that bring this party together and focus on issues that voters care about, which is uh, the economy, inflation, and crime. That's what we need to focus on. We don't need to continue to carry water for Donald right. Trump on his past grievances of the election that he clearly lost. Maria, as closely as Liz Cheney has worked with Democrats on the January 6th committee, it mm -hmm. would be stunning to see her on the campaign trail yeah. campaigning for Democrats. Do you think she'd be welcomed with open arms? I think she would be because, Alex, one of the most tragic things about all of this is that Liz Cheney is one of the most conservative Republicans that exists today. I mean, her name, her history, her voting record. And the fact that her party is punishing her for her values, for putting country and democracy and the Constitution before her party and her politics, to me is just astounding. And I really do think that what she said it should be underscored, that it demonstrates just how sick the party is and how completely deviated from what Alice says are the party's values, principles. Because as much as my dear friend Alice wants her party for that to be the focus, mm -hmm. it's not. Mm -hmm. The focus is on election deniers. And so Liz Cheney is absolutely right to say that she does not want Donald Trump to be reelected again. As a Democrat, I agree. As an American, I agree more mm -hmm. because he's a huge danger to our democracy. And I do think that she would absolutely be welcome from the Democratic side to emphasize this huge threat to democracy that would pose giving control over to Republicans who many of them are election deniers. And, right. I, and I do think one quick follow-up to what Maria said, election deniers in large part are the people that we have the Republican nominees in these midterm elections. Mm -hmm. I think this November will be a big test for the party if these people that uh, are fine with January 6th and are have problems with the way the elections are run, if they lose in November, the Republican Party needs to realize we need to do away with that wing of the Republican Party and put people that are certainly more moderate and focus on different issues. In 2024. And of course, uh, in the midterms, there are a number of election deniers who are running. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a new poll um, with just 44 days to go in, until the election. Uh, this poll from CBS and YouGov showing that seven in 10 women say that a candidate must agree with them uh, on to, to, must agree with them on abortion issues to get their vote. Um, or agree with them in general to get their vote, especially for women who, who want abortion to be legal. Um, Alice, how much do Republican candidates need to be worrying about women voters right now? Based on what we've seen in, in two times when the election was really on the ballot, one was an amendment and the other a New York congressman ran on that key issue, this was a win for Democrats. So Republicans need to realize abortion has proven to be a motivator for women and even some men and, in, and undecided voters. But the key here is to shift the focus of the election to the, 
to inflation, to the economy, mm -hmm. and to immigration. Abortion is certainly a driver, but it's always the economy that really turns out voters. And, and from a messaging standpoint, which Maria and I both do, candidates need to focus on messaging their uh, service and what they plan to do as a way to improve the economy and certainly work on inflation. Mm -hmm. I mean, abortion, of course, is certainly something that we've heard <laughs> all the, all the, the, the Democratic uh, candidates emphasizing. Uh, Maria, I, I want to ask you about another poll uh, also from CBS and, and YouGov showing that by a two to one margin, two to one, voters believe that a Republican Congress would lead to women getting fewer rights and freedoms than they have uh, now. So how much more confidence do you believe Democrats are, are feeling right now with, again, just 44 days to go? Well, we are certainly feeling confident that abortion is going to put front and center the message that you just mentioned, which is it's not just abortion. It's the fact that the Republican Party is a party that does not believe that women are equal to men that does not believe that women should have equal rights to men, that does not believe that women should have the freedom, the privacy, the liberty to make decisions about our own bodies and our own reproductive futures. That should be damning, period. And so what I believe Democrats are looking at is to mobilize and energize women voters across the board, not just Democrats, but independent women, even Republican women, who believe, again, that putting Republicans in power is a huge danger to the future of the rights of women, the future of democracy, the future of this country. Alex, there is a Republican candidate in Michigan that has said that giving women the right to vote was a mistake. This, I think, just it really gives you the picture of a party, the Republican Party, that is spectacularly out of touch with where this country is and where this country should be going in the future. I do want to ask you, Alice, about the direction of the, the Republican Party uh, in light of this new excerpt that we've got from Maggie Haberman, who's putting out one of the most highly anticipated books about Donald Trump uh, since he left office. Um, Haberman says that she had three two-hour interviews with Donald Trump. And in, in those interviews, in one of them at least, uh, he called her his psychiatrist. And she talks about Gotta a conversation that, uh, he, that he had with Mike Pence ahead of J the January 6th riots. Um, and this is uh, what he told uh, Mike Pence. Mike, you have a chance to be T Thomas Jefferson or you can be Mike Pence, Trump told Haberman, repeating an inaccurate comparison to the election of 1800. And quote, he chose to be Mike Pence. So, Alice, do you think that Mike Pence is offering Republicans uh, a, a, a version of the party that they're interested in and, and a potential candidate that they could be interested in in 2024? Let me just say, thank God Mike Pence was Mike Pence on January 6th and, and did what he could to help certify the election. But look, the good thing is GOP has a deep bench right now. We have several candidates that are already testing the waters and going out to these early states. And we have a good number of people that would be good, viable candidates. Mike Pence, we certainly have DeSantis, we have uh, Tom Cotton, we have uh, Tim Scott, several people. So whether it's Mike Pence or any of these others, I am encouraged to know that the GOP has several other options than Donald Trump to choose from. I want to play a little bit of sound uh, from Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace. This is what she had to say earlier today on Meet the Press. Take a listen. Do you expect in, an impeachment vote against President Biden if Republicans take over the House? I believe there's a lot of pressure on Republicans to have that vote, to put that, that legislation forward and to have that vote. I think that is uh, something that some folks are considering. Wow. Maria, first of all, what would they impeach him for? And, and how likely do you think that, that that is? They would impeach him for being a Democrat. I mean, really, there is no other retribution. reason. Right, retribution, getting back at him uh, for everything that he and the Democrats have focused on in terms of making Donald Trump accountable, making the Republicans accountable, for getting us so close to losing our democracy, and for them not caring, not doing anything about it, not putting Trump to the side, putting him, continuing to put him front and center. I think that sound should terrify all of us. Mm -hmm. And there is already legislation, right, right uh, that Republicans have filed to try to make that happen if Republicans take over. And I think it underscores 
the fact that they have zero solutions on the things that they say should be front and center. Like my friend Alice says, inflation should be front and mm -hmm. center. The economy should be front and center. And yes, it is. And guess who has actually done things to help the economy, to help inflation? The Democrats and Joe Biden with zero help from the Republicans. They are completely bankrupt of ideas to solve the American people. And more than mm -hmm. that, they represent the tremendous danger to democracy that we haven't seen since the Civil War. Yeah, they've certainly been telegraphing what they plan to do if they take back the House, no. uh, not just impeachment, but uh, dismantling, of course, the January 6th committee, yep. launching all kinds of investigations. Uh, exactly. We have to leave it there. Alice Stewart, Maria Cardona. Thank Thanks, you very Alex. much for your Alex. time. Appreciate it.